Good evening. Welcome this evening to the studio. <laughs> and I'll get the scene switching right one of these days. Right, so I need out some rings. In order to continue this, we started doing Viper Berries. Which probably, well, I don't know whether it's. Could, certainly good for a man. I don't know if it sort of could work for a lady as well. So I don't quite know how long to make this. Probably. Um, let's make it uh, seven inches and then we can always make it a bit longer if necessary. Good afternoon, Felix. Right, and um, see phone. No idea if that's enough, but we'll find out. Hello. You're going to sit at that side, are you? So we need to open all of the rings, or most of them, so we shall do that first. And, and what I'll do is I'll also change my glasses, which will make it easier for me to see what I'm doing. like I might have a curious pussy cat. I actually only want to open half of these black ones. Uh, One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, and one. I only want to open half of them because I can close the other half, which will then. Uh, just speed up the process of weaving the black rings a little bit. I'll do the rest of the black ones in a minute. I'm going to open the green ones. Whilst I've got everything in my hands for opening rings. Now all the green ones need to be opened. Because these ones specifically get woven in amongst the blacks.
anybody that's watching I'll uh, just mention that this is uh, chain mail chain mail is the skill or the craft of weaving rings it's not armor you use chain mail techniques to produce armor but chain mail isn't armor which is why it gets called chain mail armor just to distinguish it from uh, other types now this is done me made using aluminium rings armor is done made using iron rings and they then usually get riveted I don't do riveting on this don't need to don't require that level of strength and the aluminium then gets anodized which is what produces all these lovely colors and part of that process is polishing as well so that lovely and shiny and reflective and sparkle And they're also um, being pure aluminium they um, don't contain things like nickel so there's no um, if you are, uh, do have an allergy then uh, to some metals like nickel then you won't find that in uh, in aluminium jewelry you might find it in the clasps so if you uh, uh, interested in aluminium and uh, chainmail steel jewellery check the clasps because if it's a silver plated clasp for example you may find uh, that there is uh, nickel underneath the uh, the silver plating or the gold plating and almost certainly copper as well uh, and even in stainless steel you'll get some level of nickel I generally use um, sterling silver clasps that way there's no nickel although there is uh, you do get a little bit of tarnishing uh, with sterling silver but if you prefer um, so, uh, so if you prefer uh, stainless steel for example they can be supplied with stainless steel clasps Generally on the Etsy store, which you'll see on the left hand. Actually, I must change that URL. In fact, I'm going to do it now whilst I remember. Um, There we go. Whilst I remembered, um, it's a slightly easier URL to remember. So again, art.etsy.com. All the jewellery items and the chainmail that you're seeing pictures of in the bottom left hand corner, you will find on the shop. They're all items which have been made on stream. And just as I'm making this one and also uh, the other things that you see down there other crafts that I've done on stream as well so you'll see, you will see carving on there you'll see um, pyrography and you'll also see scraper board and a punch craft punch craft is uh, miniature rug making it's made using the same techniques 
Scraper board is porcelain clay covered with black Indian ink which you then scrape the ink away to uh, form the picture. Um, carving somewhat as you might expect using sharp chisels but uh, generally speaking uh, you may do relief carving um, which is slightly different to full 3D carving. Uh, it's kind of um, a picture style of carving um, so it, uh, it it's kind of on a baseboard uh, stuck to a baseboard effectively and of course the jewelry which you see uh, you see here being made Uh, anything that's in the uh, the shop, it's all made to order, uh, to the length and, uh, and sizes, etc. Uh, if you look there and you see something you'd like but in a different colour, there are 15 different colours available. Um, just start a conversation and uh, that can be, uh, it can be modified. To, uh, to give you the colours that are colour or colours that you'd like or patterns. That's right, so what we're doing now for Viper Bearis. It's based on, on a simple one-in-one -one chain. So that's what I'm just doing here now is uh, creating the, the base chain from which the weave is actually then constructed. So I'm just extending what we've already done. And while you're doing this, generally speaking, the pliers become like extensions of your hands. So it's you see me handling the rings quite a lot with uh, with just the pliers. That way it's quicker than putting them down and picking them up. And actually, sometimes trying to pick up rings with your fingers can be interesting, <laughs> shall we say? They have a tendency to want to escape. So I'm just making a simple chain, closing closing up the rings, making sure the gaps disappear. These rings are what they call um, saw cut rings, they're not machine cut. And it refers to the, uh, the, the way the cut is actually made that separates them into individual rings from a coil of wire. Um, saw cut being the best. It produces a really clean uh, vertical edge which with a little bit of manipulation can be made to virtually disappear when you uh, close them up or actually disappear sometimes it can be really hard from time to time to see where the uh, where the gap should be because occasionally when you want to take them apart for whatever reason um, trying to, you, know, you need to find where that gap is to, to be able to twist them open again, and sometimes that can be really hard to do. Uh, often you can't see it, and from time to time you can't even feel it, even if you you take great care. It can be closed that well that you just can't even feel where the uh, the join is. a few more of these black rings and then we can start to uh, to interweave the 
the green rings. One of the advantages of um, this style of jewellery, chain mail, um, whether it's done in al well, whether it's done in aluminium or um, some of the more exotic exotic uh, metals that you can get, like niobium or titanium, um, as uh, both of those, of course, like aluminium, is very light. But um, you can also use copper. Very nice colour. Um, does tarnish of course and potentially goes green unless it's been um, varnished and uh, and protected. Uh, stainless steel is often used a lot. It's quite a weighty metal. So you know, stainless steel is good if you're after weight or mimicking um, what uh, sterling silver would feel like because sterling silver is also a weighty metal. It's quite a heavy, a heavy metal. And you can get some uh, some other yeah, more exotic uh, things as well. Um, but generally, that's that's what I will stick. I stick to now. Then, um, let's see if I can do this. Nope, that's not right. It's like that. Okay. It's 24 hours since I last did this. Now I've got to remember um, how I was doing it. It's like that. There we go. Um, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. And now we just just uh, basically interweave um, all these green rings. We we bringing this uh, chain together as we do it. Okay. Got to remember the right way to get hold of those rings. And of hooks around like that. God oh dear. Come on with ring, stop playing games. That one then goes that way through there. So, well like most of these, they look quite complex patterns. They are quite complex patterns, but there's often a relatively easy way of doing them. And the skill is being able to uh, sometimes to find that easy way. And then uh, to actually sort of close up and, and uh, make the thing look really nice. Ixthillion, good evening. Welcome to the studio this evening. How are you? It's that ring there. And through there like that. Not too long to go now before Christmas.
I'm liking this particular weave more. And there's something there's something nice about uh, about a weave that you sort of is sort of relatively. Um, What's it easy to do? It's not easy to do, but it's um, there are certain ones which are sort of um, you can almost sit back and relax a little bit while you're doing them, and uh, sort of get, you know, get into the sort of the zone of just you know time just passes really quickly while you're doing it, and uh, this is kind of one of those weaves. Some of the others, like the trying to do that, um, as I was trying to do the candy cane in two colours rather than four, to, st you know, to start with, that took a heck of a lot of concentration. Um, until I worked out mm, the easier way of doing it, but um, that's um, that's what I mean by, you know, this, this one I don't have to spend ages trying to work out where the colours are going, or it just fits together. <laughs> Bit like picking up a, a get, doing a jigsaw with every piece you pick up, you actually put in the right place first time. Yeah, I gathered that you'd have a lager there. I might actually even get myself some for this Christmas. Just, I don't usually drink a great deal. Um, I don't, I, no, I'll rephrase that. I don't drink a great deal. Um, and uh, very rarely do we sort of buy uh, buy lager or anything, but uh, might buy some this year, just to be different. Everything tidy and ready for Christmas. Oh well, everything's ready for Christmas. <laughs> With having the new studio uh, constructed, amongst uh, other things, it's the. There's, Things are a little bit untidy, shall we say, and they're not going to get any better for a considerable period of time. Now, why does that not want to go through there? Just because I didn't have my hand on it properly. <laughs> it's this special program you see it's this special um, special stuff that twitch has um, you know highly complex programs that are in there that analyze the speech you see when it's something interesting uh, it inserts a delay and a buffer you see makes you rebuffer Like Minecraft, a special code in Minecraft that when you want six of something, you always have five. You've always got to craft another six to, to for the extra one, and uh, it sort of always happens. You know, it's a special code that kicks in. Now I wasn't particularly. Uh, I was. Have they been saying something about um, me not particularly drinking very much? in terms of alcohol that is 
and I possibly was saying something about um, everything here being a little bit topsy-turvy with having the new studio built which um, means lots of things are going to be moved around and stored whilst that goes on I seem to be fairly lucky with Twitch though whenever I watch it. I don't really seem to get much buffering these days. I don't have a great deal of uh, chance to watch it much. Or I haven't for several weeks. It does seem to be sort of quiet does Twitch though at the moment, just coming up to Christmas. I don't know if it's, I kind of would have thought with sort of everybody being off, um, not everybody, but lots of people being off work with uh, the Christmas break, Twitch would have been um, quite busy, but uh, it doesn't seem to be. Of course we have the stupid idiots around, but meh, that's kind of uh, normal, you know, the morons are around. to be open a little bit more. that ring yes. no oh well I'll find it later It's, uh, well, <laughs> there's all sorts of reasons why it could be happening, I guess. Ultimately, it's down to bandwidth and, and uh, computing power, but... Uh, Almost out of uh, 
chain so I'll measure it in a moment see how long this is and then see if we need to get any more rings out Buffering on Twitch, I think there's maybe buffering problems on one or two other sites at the moment, given by the exclamations I'm hearing from Ladies Hour. With a hundred hundred, yeah, you should be okay. <laughs> uh, of course, the um, the bit about the internet is it doesn't matter how fast your connection is to the provider. It depends on how fast their connection is out to the internet and who they peer with, and how you get to the destination like Twitch. Um, if there's a low bandwidth connection in there somewhere, then it doesn't matter if you've got gigabits or terabits. You, you know, your maximum speed is, is the slowest part of the link. Uh, and if you happen to be on an overloaded server at Twitch as well, then um, of course then you've, you've, you've got that to contend with and your machine will be sat there. I mean, I haven't got the fastest of machines. It was reasonably fast at the time I built it, but now it's a relatively slow machine. And even watching, you know, when I watch Twitch on that, the machine's idling most of the time. It's not, um, it's not really uh, pushed at all. Um, but so, do we have any Christmas? No, we've got Christmas rain at the moment in uh, in Yorkshire, uh, and it's a really sort of it was a really warm day, so I'm not kind of expecting snow for a while. I don't actually know what the forecast is. Kind of nice to have snow at Christmas as long as it sort of doesn't disrupt things, but pretty to look at. So this bracelet is currently six inches long. So if I make it six, if I make it another half inch long, then uh, it will fit a woman quite nicely because I think this sort of colour would go nicely uh, with sort of an evening dress. Um, or it can be extended to something like bad agencies for a fella uh, as well because the um, sort of colour would go quite uh, quite nicely on a fella's wrist. So let's put about another inch of black chain on and then uh, this will be almost done. Now these are what? 3 sixteenths. 4.1 millimeters. Another inch would be 25. That's about six. Hmm, about six or seven rings. Two, three, four, five, six. going to be about eight I think because of the uh, that's the internal I oh, know maybe anyway let's have some of these C4 I'm out because I'm not uh, I've used almost all of them yeah that's one thing um, one thing you as a broadcaster you can actually choose which ingest server you you use generally speaking of course you ideally pick one that's close to where you uh, you are although I don't really know whether twitch actually has 
in, you know, separate ingest servers in London and Stockholm and France and things like that, but you do get to choose. So if one starts playing up, you can uh, you can switch to another one. But uh, as a as a viewer, you don't get any choice. It just goes to whichever one the uh, the system decides to send you. Hundred centimeter meter of snow, yeah. Lawn is green. <laughs> Oh, it's just different, isn't it? Um, I mean, snow, snow's fine when you know how to deal with it. Um, I mean, it was we, we once went to Lapland um, at Christmas, and uh, in that, uh, you know, you were uh, well. There was a heck of a lot of snow, shall we say, around the place and uh, people were dealing with it fine um, here sort of in the UK they don't deal that well with uh, with snow and I think if we had a meter of snow at any one particular well I mean I mean said which I was about to say if we had a meter of snow at any one particular time it, the country would probably grind to a halt but um, in places like the um, the Yorkshire Moors and, and places like that, a metre of snow is not unusual. We used to have it. Yeah. Well, we use, what we used to have and what we have now is um, somewhat different. But and the um, company I uh, I work for. Um, services some buildings in remote places uh, in Yorkshire and um, in a couple of the buildings they have um, parking spots on the roof to park the snow cap in winter so <laughs> um, that's quite a that's, that was quite, that's quite a that was quite an interesting fact when I learned that uh, was that Oh, you're from, actually from Lapland. Well, yeah, uh, Rovaniemi. Rovaniemi we actually visited, so, uh, yeah, the, the Santa uh, thing. But um, we did, well, I was going to say, we, we when we were there, we, we flew back from Rovaniemi on Concorde. So when Concorde was visiting, we went out there for three days and had fun playing in the snow with reindeer and... Uh, snowmobiles and just generally uh, having fun. I I I remember the thing. I, one of the things I remember about it is it's kind of a it's kind of I wonder how would describe it as a magical experience because you know you just the way you you view that sort of thing. But one of the things that always that amused me when we got there. Um, was I don't know if it was one of the guides or, or somebody he said we're having unseasonably warm weather. It's really warm today. It's only minus twelve, um, and <laughs> it was only minus twelve. But the daft, uh, well, I don't know. I mean, to me, at the time, it, it sort of. Um, it, I was just thinking then. My fees is not that much colder. Um, Minus, minus 12 didn't feel that cold. Now obviously I was wearing sort of um, clothing suitable for that, but um, it didn't... Minus 12 in the UK would be really, really, really cold. Over there, yeah. Yeah. God, everyone's terrified, that's right. Yeah, I remember there also the, the bus is sort of, you know, the road's ice and the transport was doing 50 miles an hour on the road that was made out of ice. Well, covered in ice. It was just hmm, another day.
Yeah. <laughs> it is great warm weather, yeah. I mean, it's, I, 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 I haven't skied. I don't know. My, uh, I, I, my winter sport, if you like, if if I had one at all, is ice skating. But um, um, I can, I, yeah, I, I can imagine how sort of skiing and things you get, you, you could get really warm. And and of course the the bit that's amusing in some ways about skiing is, uh, of course, you can get sunburnt <laughs> really easily in minus 15 degrees which um, I know sort of catches catches a lot of people out probably for the first you know for the first time and they don't uh, don't realize it can happen I guess Exilian, you must be an expert skier then if you've been living in that sort of uh, environment. Now that chain I've just added should be about two inches long so that when it's folded Hmm, it might be a bit short. We'll do a bit and we'll uh, add some more black again if I need to. Actually, I was thinking perhaps with uh, something like um, skiing or um, the problem might actually be keeping cool rather than keeping warm, isn't it? With the energy expanded, expended. Now when I um, when I go ice skating, I, mean, I don't I don't uh, yeah because in England it's only sort of um, uh, you know, around about four or five degrees in uh, in ice skating rings and things like that. But uh, so you're not you're not wearing thermal clothes and things. But it uh, can get really warm when you're trying to skate just with the effort. Snowboard. <laughs> okay. Everybody has their own favourite st stuff. Hi to Exilian's uh, granddad. Welcome to the stream. Yes, it is. Mind you, you couldn't say anything else at this point in time, could you, Exilian? <laughs> oh, I apologise, his dad. Not his granddad. I'm sorry about that. Sorry, sir. I'm wearing glasses, you see, and these glasses are so I can see this close. When I'm trying to read the screen, it's a little bit harder for me to see. Yeah, I was just thinking, I wonder if uh, you get the same sort of stereotypes where, uh, you know, um, 
like because of where you're from everybody assumes you know how to ski and things like that um, Oh, come on, Ring, go through there. Why do you not want to? Okay, usually if a ring doesn't want to go through somewhere it's a good indication that you're doing something wrong. So take it out, start again. Yeah, and that one went through really easy. Perhaps it just got a ring twisted in slightly the wrong way. But uh, that's that's a a tip if you ever do chain mail is if you. Uh, if a ring doesn't want to go through, there's usually a good reason why. <laughs> yes, no <don't> appeal. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, why do it yourself when you can have a motor to do it for you, yeah. Right, measure that. Uh, just a teensy tiny bit. No, actually, that's. I'll put one more green ring on there. That's the right length. This is just marginally short of seven inches. Um, but uh, what I would have to do. Yeah, come on. What I, what I would have to do to put a clasp on it is is probably add an extra couple of rings. Um, I don't have a spare clasp, but what I probably have to do is add a couple of rings from the from either from the green or the black, two rings to come to one point to a point through which I uh, they I can then uh, insert those rings into the the clasp, so the clasp will probably. Well, it will want to sit vertically, so I'll have to turn it, which means putting an extra pair of rings. So one ring to bring to a point, and or two rings to bring it to a point. Then at least one more ring horizontally, in order to uh, um, to bring the clasp in, so the clasp will lie flat along with the chain. And uh, on the other side, uh, a couple of rings uh, in order to. I might get away with one, in order to provide the ring into which the class hooks. Um, that will extend the length a little bit, because the clasp itself is, give or take a little bit, half an inch long. So what I've got now is a seven and a half inch bracelet. It's a bit, a little bit long for a woman, a little bit short for a man. So, um, but they can be adjusted. They just uh, just undo the rings. So here we have, uh, for the first time I've ever done one, uh, a Viper Beris uh, weave in black and sea foam. I know it looks slightly blue, just the lighting again and this camera. Um, that uh, uh, imparts a slight blue look on those, um, plus it's possibly picking up reflection off my shirt. But the, the camera is a little bit blue sensitive. Which is why the purples um, show up blue as well. But um, that was an interesting weave to do. I quite enjoyed it once I got the hang of it. And I quite like the colours. So I think it would uh, go really nicely as a subtle 
subtle accent with a, an evening dress for for a lady or uh, just general wear for a man the, the bracelet is sort of chunky or you know large enough to to go on a male wrist even if it is a bit short especially for me but there we go right so the question is what do I do now I'll just put that down there so what I could do now what can I do now I could try another weave but um, I could try doing that in a different color um, yeah having had a play with that let's have a look what um, what might be good colors or different colors anyway this is the, um, the, the, the magic box of rings. <laughs> oh, my, my box of many colours. Um, I don't know. Lady Zara is usually the colour consultant, you see. What do you think would be a nice pair of colours? To try another one of these chains in. Want to see the chain or the colours? Yes, both. Back in a moment. I'm just going to consult the colour expert. That's the chain. And that's the colours. So you got the inner chain and then now I'm sliding. Green jacks and colour and black so yeah, the inner colour. Yeah, I've done this course before, but mm -hmm. not with one person before. No champagne. No pull on it. Okay, champagne. Yeah. Champagne and bronze. Be back in a moment, guys. Is that you, Tim? Uh, yeah, it's Seafood. Uh, you, it's the same colour. It's a lighter version of the same colour. It's the, um, just got a different set of rings on. Yeah, but that's all right. I shall be back in a moment. Okay, Exilian. Uh, Merry Christmas from the UK to uh, to Sweden. I'll show you this, but they're not all not all colours are there. So these are the actual ones. I'm stumped because you've done so many. Yeah. Well, it's just for this design. Same colours as well. Well, that's the other one, that's the other one. These ones. 
Holocaust is virtually the same. See if that means it's a bit like that. Yeah, I do it again. Mm-hmm. Okay. 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 Okay, I am back now. Now that the cons the, the colour consultant has been consulted. So, um, yep. Put those to one side because they're actually the wrong wings for this. I'll just put these um, sea foam back. So we've been given given a, a colour recommendation by the expert. which looks to be quite a good one. So we're going to have a royal blue car, which is the dark one, with a um, sky blue uh, accent. So royal blue, which is these. And then sky blue, which is these. So what I ought to do is since I'm doing another one the same length, if I actually count the number of rings, I'd be able to do it ex do it exactly. So that's a few of those out. Let's um, let's have a quick count of rings. Cocktail six extremely useful for this. For chain mail. Because one thing is they don't scratch anything because being wood they won't scratch the the metal um, and the dyeing coat dye coating that's on them. Um, they're pointed, which makes it useful for getting in, and you can't bend things because the cocktail stick will break. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, uh, and that would be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 38, 40, 42, 44, 46, 48, 50, 52, 54, 56, 58, 60, 62, 64, 66, 68, 70, 72, 74, 76, 78, 80. 82 yeah it would be 82 
that kind of makes sense so 80 80 80 of the sky blue and 82 of the dark blue and there's not 8 to here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 31 32 33 34, 35, 36, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. So that's 45 blue there. Let's get some more of those out. Whenever you get, you know, you, you talk about like a hundred rings, it always sounds like a lot until you sort of put them together. And there's, you know, say 80, yeah, 160 rings in that. And uh, they um, very quickly sort of uh, disappear. <laughs> 42, I think I said. 43, 82 with one extra and I want 80 of these 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 76. Four short. Seventy-seven, seventy-eight, seventy-nine, and eighty. And I'll put that blue one away. Right, so It's now opening and closing rings again, so I want to open half of the other blue ones, close half of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty-one, forty-two,
30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41. So 41 need to be opened and 41 need to be closed and then all of the uh, sky blue ones need to be opened. Easier to count them at this stage than it is to try to just sort of put things together. You can get to do things a lot quicker if you, uh, you know, you've got exactly the right quantity. You're not having to try and uh, guess or uh, keep having to measure. Come on out of there. Thank you. Although it may seem um, a little bit as though uh, this is the boring bit, it actually isn't that bad to do because it's, a, it's an easy bit. <laughs> There's no precision closing or anything like that that you need to do with this. You don't need any particular strength. It's just a matter of uh, opening rings. So this is... Um, can be just as much fun from that perspective because it doesn't sort of take much effort and I've just had two rings shoot off in completely different directions one of which I found the other one of which is somewhere over there behind the camera just see if I can see it Because I'll have to get another one out otherwise. Yeah, I'll just get another one out. So the one I put I just put away not so long ago because I can't got one extra out, I need back out again. Because the other one's on the desk somewhere and I'm not about to go hunting for it now. It'll turn up. They always do, they don't go missing for long. So that's those. Now then, now we're going to do all these uh, sky blue ones. 80 of these, so shouldn't take too long to do. Now 80 sounds a lot. So 
only about uh, it's only a few minutes of um, opening uh, opening rings. I'm going to end up having to cut that spring off, which is not going to be the easiest thing. It's catching on my finger, which is. Uh, if I was doing hundreds of these, that would bother me after uh, not very long. But uh, that's that's me modifying the tools, because otherwise these um, these particular pliers, when um, they had two springs in them, were almost impossible to close, and required a heck of a lot of force, which made your hand sore. Um, by bending one of the springs out of the way, um, they're now sort of acceptable. Now the spring is there just to um, just to make the jaws open again, so you don't actually end up having to do it with your fingers, which, uh, which can also make your hands sore. But um, they don't need to be that strong, and these were extremely strong springs. One of the problems I'll have actually is, is getting it out or cutting it off, because spring steel is really difficult to cut. And then I'll want to make sure it's smooth enough so I don't cut myself or jab myself with the uh, with the off cut that's left. It's about halfway through these now, so we're getting there fairly quickly. This is going to be another Viper Berries chain with a different colour pair. So we're going to have a dark blue core and these uh, sky blue um, accents down the side. Sometimes I really do wonder how these rings manage to intertwine themselves quite so much.
Right, we want to almost finish opening all of these rings, just a few more, and then we'll close up the blue ones, the dark blue ones, which are royal blue. And then we'll uh, make the core chain. And then we'll be able to interweave all these accents down the sides. Okay, so that's those. So now we're closing up rings. This will make it uh, quicker to uh, to create the core chain. It's, it's sort of marginally quicker, they're easier to hold um, as single rings than they would be if they were woven into the chain. Um, which is why it's uh, it's slightly quicker doing it uh, like this, because you don't have uh, as careful a positioning of pliers that you need to do to be able to actually get hold of them as you would if they were actually uh, wrapped into the chain. So, over the length of a chain, it can save a few minutes quite easily. Which doesn't sound much, but uh, if you're doing a fair number of them and you're doing a few different bracelets, for example, those few minutes soon add up uh, to... Uh, into minutes into hours and so on. Rings destroyed. Hello, Aldo Lech. Good evening. Welcome to the stream this evening. You're going quite well, thank you. I mean, I've just destroyed a ring, or actually scratched the ring, scratched the coating off the ring. But uh, so uh, this is the one that was being done last night. The Viper Berries. It's now uh, now complete. It doesn't have any clasps on it at the moment. But uh, so that one. So I'm just doing another one of those. Yep. Unfortunately, once you uh, if you scratch the ring, then I don't um, I don't use it. So unfortunately, it goes in the uh, goes in the round file. It's not even it's not even worth keeping around for doing like experimental uh, weaves with or anything like trying anything out because um, it's always possible it'll accidentally get put back in with the working rings and I don't actually want to uh, have a sort of sell a bracelet with scratched rings. So it goes into bean straight away. You like it? Oh, that's good. Well, that's the that's the first time I've tried that weave, so it was an interesting uh, interesting thing to do. And now I'm just trying it with um, a couple of different colours. So that one that one I showed you was black and sea foam. This one is going to be royal blue and sky blue. I'm just uh, closing up these uh, core, these rings, uh, sky blue rings, so they're going to form the core. So 
Now, how have you been, LLH? You all ready for Christmas? It's not long to go now. Just a few more days. And a few more days after that, it'll be 2016. You think, oh, that's good. Now, Lady Zara was reading today about uh, a shopping centre where uh, at the end of the day it was taking people six or seven hours to get out of the car park so I'm thinking I'm glad I don't have any Christmas shopping to do in shopping centres at the moment. I cannot imagine having sort of spent you know, several hours in a shopping centre then spending several hours sat in your car waiting to get out of the car park. And I can't imagine what, what how it is things block up that much that it takes that long. But uh, obviously they do. Uh, she was telling me about, uh, she was reading it, where people were just abandoning, 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 it's a hard word to say, their cars in the queue and going to sort of watch a film and come back. Uh, well, it depends what you do or don't believe in, but um, it can be kind of a magical time of uh, the year, can uh, Christmas with pretty lights and things like that. Uh, even if you leave out the uh, the various faiths, to which it means uh, different things, but. Uh, It looks, look, you know, often looks pretty with all the all the coloured lights. There we go. A ring tried to escape. Well, I've got four more to do after this, and then actually weave this bracelet. Downtown gets the crazy at this time of year. Okay. I tend to avoid towns and things at this time of year if I can. Um, more or less for the same reason. I don't go to things like computer shows and things like that these days, just because, or game shows for that matter. Um, I've kind of. Um, get annoyed by the crowds these days and all the pushing and shoving and the noise and being there done that you celebrate spending time with the family it's just a different celebration And you never know, Santa Claus might be real. I mean, after all, uh, NASA track him uh, uh, at Christmas on the 25th. So, <laughs> I mean, you can actually you can actually watch NASA, and you can see their uh, their big um, is it NASA or NORAD? Their big tracking board, uh, which uh, which tracks Santa going round the world.
Yeah, I'm cloudy, that's true. Oh, okay. Well, you see, I'm not. Uh, I'm not up on all the uh, all the different faces. I'm afraid. So, apologies for that. And we'll be spending time with family this Christmas. But in the meantime. I'll be making this chain. So this, the core of this chain, this is just a simple chain, one in one um, chain. Just about well, it is the sim. I think it is the simplest chain that you can you can make. <laughs> uh, well, it turns out that way, isn't it? But uh, it's it's the giving of gifts. It just turns out to be capitalistic, just because you you you. Uh, transfer something of value to the person that has it that you want it from you know the theory of money You know, I'm kind of surprised that there isn't a bar humbug um, emote on uh, on Twitch, <laughs> especially constructive for this time of year. Or maybe there is, and I just haven't seen it. Even though this is about well, even though this is the simplest chain you can make, it's uh, still surprising just how long it takes to actually make it. And I'm the one that's making it, and I'm a bit surprised at just how long it's taking to make.
<laughs> oh, I don't know. I, I might, I might give him that one for for Yeld LH. A Christmas present to Twitch. The idea of a bar humbug uh, emoji. Of course, all the partner streamers could have uh, could have had that done themselves anyway. Doesn't look like I got that far to go now on this uh, this core chain. Might be a simple chain, but even this I can drop. Nearly there, just a few more rings. Can we start the more interesting bit of this? In fact, I must have miscounted because I... Mm, yeah, I've got an extra... an extra closed ring. Never mind, that's not too hard to deal with. We just open one and close one. Always assuming I can find the end of it. Of 
should be there. Here it is. Right, and now we can... How long that is? Mm, about 14 inch, which makes sense considering I wanted to do an 8 inch bracelet. So... This first few is going to be... Just a little bit awkward until it's uh, it's woven enough to get uh, my fingers around and hold on to it. Clary book. Sorry, I was busy concentrating on what I'm doing and I didn't actually see you join the uh, the chat. Sorry about that. Let me just get that through there and fasten it and then uh, I will uh, catch up. Ah, oh, don't worry about it. What am I making? Well, I was zoomed in just to give you a closer uh, closer view on it. I can zoom in, uh, zoom off if you like. Oh, yeah. I'll try. It's really hard with uh, stuff like this because if I zoom out too far, of course you don't you don't uh, you can't really see what I'm doing. It's that. Let's zoom it out a bit. There we go. I am doing a viper berries chain. So this is one of this is one I did finish tonight. Started yesterday, finished tonight. It's this first time I've done it, and um, I've had a word with my colour consultant, and uh, we're trying another one with dark dark royal blue here as the core, and uh, it's a light sky blue as the accent colour, and uh, see how this one looks. I kind of enjoyed making this chain, so I wanted to do another one. Whilst I got the hang of doing it, and before I forgot how to do it uh, for the next time. So, how are you doing, uh, Claire? Now that uh, now that you've got to work for a living. <laughs> Uh, Viper Bevis is what it's called. Some really interesting names for chains. 
Have you got um, a clasp yet for that one that you've been wearing, or are you still um, still wearing it? not too big yeah the clasp had, adds about half an inch to the length or it does when you're doing um, chain mail um, I imagine it probably does the same in uh, in in ribbon chain like you've got there Yeah, um, a better glue might be E6000. Uh, it's a more flexible glue. Um, the super glue is goes quite hard, rigid, uh, whereas um, E6000 is is more of a fabric glue. It, it's when it sets, it doesn't set hard. It sets flexible, and so it, it will probably bond with the uh, with the ribbon a lot better than uh, than uh, super glue would do. Um, what else might? Uh... Now, other than that, you you sort of um, you could sew a seam on it, I guess. Uh, you know. Um, as, you, as you fold it back uh, around a ring just so it holds in place that way but then uh, that obviously will take up more time and therefore cost more so it looks fancy oh, okay You could also try something like, um, I don't know, it might, I was, I was thinking of something like, um, like a, a rivet type of thing. Um, that might be a, a press stud um, if you were sewing it, but uh, maybe something like a, a rivet or something like that, which you could sort of just punch through. To hold it in place, um, I was I was also thinking of things that um, you know you get uh, a bit a, a, a bit like the idea of a, um, a an earring post, you know, with with an accent on the outside post and then a, a thing on the back, but something like that that would go through through the ribbon through both lengths of ribbon, and but you obviously wouldn't want a pin sticking out the back. I tell you what, you could try um, safety pin. The um, safety pins seem to be a jewellery item these days. Uh, people making things like bangles out of safety pins, uh, and they come in all sorts of colours. So you could always use the safety pin. You know, wrap it. You catch the ribbon um, two or three times and then it will sort of sit flat on the um, across the ring 
Um, you can get small ones, but you could you could make it sort of part of the design and you know use quite a large safety pin. Um, the only ones I've seen, you know, I suppose you can get just normal, proper small safety pins, but the um, the jewelry ones that I've seen, which are just normal safety pins, they're just being coloured, so like red, blue, green, yeah, that sort of colour. But they're sort of quite large, so mm, must be about an inch across, something like that. Welcome back, Elder Lich. It's it's actually not as bad as it as it looks. So you start with just a straight chain, one in one chain. And then effectively, all I'm doing is is twisting it clock in this particular case clockwise. What happens is it's it forms. If I just keep sorry, I'm keep hold it, but it forms. It sort of if you if you just keep doing this, it forms. He says trying to do it here and not succeeding very well but it, it kind of forms a two by side by side two rows if you just keep twisting it I don't know if you can see but effectively all I'm doing is just twisting it giving it half a twist on each link and the two rows sit side by side so that's that's how the cores build up now obviously if I relax the tension that falls apart but all I'm doing then is um, put a twist so that ring slides up over there like that so you, you get a, you get a loop and then the accent color goes through the the accent that's already there and through this ring I've just twisted into position like that now it, it, it looks a little awkward to do Because what you've got to try and do is get get a ring through there and then through this ring you've just twisted into position. And you can sort of fiddle it around, you know, if you do it like that and you know, sort of revolve the ring around. But once you get once you sort of follow the fact that what you're doing is twisting this ring into position, if you hold this this ring in the right way. What you do is you pick it up like that, which twists it into position. If you can see it twisting into position, and then this one I just slot through the gap, and then I can just pick it up. <laughs> I must admit, when I when I was looking at the CGI on it. Um, I was kind of, I can't, you know, how on earth do you hold this ring twisted? Uh, and it took me a while to, uh, of, do, of doing it on the first chain. But then once, once I, you know, once you start doing it, you learn the, instead of trying to position this chain and then try and put this one through and it, it sort of starts falling apart. You just learn like this trick of picking that up on that, on that side. And then just put in the other side of the ring in the right place. 
Um, it's one. It's just one of those techniques that you 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 know as you learn how you how to do some of these things, it just becomes uh, you know you you look for that little shortcut if you like because it could be really frustrating trying to line those up. Whereas um, doing it as I'm doing it here, I don't have to line anything up. It just naturally goes into the right place. <laughs> no, I, I mean that's this. That's that's always the skill, isn't it? I mean, it's, I, I I can carve, and you know that's hopefully when I carve, I make it look easy, and that's because I've practiced a lot. Okay, I've not practiced this weave a lot, but what I've have done with this is I have practiced chainmail quite a bit, and as you as you do practice it, you look out for. The, those little techniques that make it easier. Um, I mean it's for example one of the things I'm doing here is okay I've just done that one on this side now if I bring this ring you know twist as I'm doing the clockwise to put this ring underneath here I'd then be trying to sort of fiddle a ring on this back side into the right place but you learn chains like this are symmetrical. So all I need to do is turn it over and I can now do another one on the front. So I don't have to do it, try and fiddle it in the back, I just turn it over and, and do it like another one on the front, which is easier to do. So once you find the easy position, you're just looking to say, hey, can I just do something like turn the, turn the chain over, turn it round? Um, to do the to do the other one the um, candy cane that I was doing this one it's round but you, you sort of do one side then just turn it around and do the other side both sides are symmetrical so rather than sort of trying to work sort of backwards you just keep turning ah you what those from the um, Hobbycraft was it? Um, how are you finding them? Not too bad. Oh, that's good. It's, yeah, I was going to say, the, I was going to kind of misalign them, miss, miss whatever, um, a little bit there because I was going to say, oh, they, they do have good stuff in sometimes. The, all the stuff is, you know, relatively decent, you know. Um, tools are where people tend to want to save money for some reason. You know, you, you find people spend lots of money on things like beads or card or whatever. But when they come to buy tools, they always want to uh, get cheap. Um, and you find them in, in, in a lot of places, you know, the cheap tools. And it's, um, tools are things that are worth investing in, <laughs> uh, not, not going cheap. And so... Uh, I tend I tend not to um, to buy tools in shops like that just because uh, you know, it's usually uh, there are usually better places. Oh, yuck! Shouldn't be magnetic. That's not a good thing to be. Isn't magnetic? For, uh, well, I suppose for aluminium it doesn't really matter, but one of the things you'll find if they are magnetic um, pliers, which you might want to watch, is they'll pick up um, aluminium, well, uh, not aluminium, because they will pick up aluminium, but if, you, if you, you, you just get like iron filings, and it's just dust and stuff like that, but little bits 
uh, will get attracted and uh, what say stuck on, on the pliers, but they will sort of accumulate on the pliers. So you'll have to keep making sure they're clean. Otherwise, um, as you grasp a ring tight, you will you will potentially mark the rings. Dead 360x. I hope that doesn't mean that was uh, that was a game console of yours, but uh, welcome. Thank you very much for the follow. Um, I was going to say if you if you can look in somewhere like um, B and Q or something like that, Claire, you can get for yeah for screwdrivers. Um, that ring is going in the wrong place. No, it's not. Um, you get you get them for screwdrivers, magnetizing demagnetizers. Um, so that you can magnetize a screwdriver and then demagnetize it afterwards. Um, they might work on your. Uh... Uh, on your uh, on your pliers to uh, to get rid of the magnetism unless they've you know really put a strong magnetic field on them. Screwdrivers sometimes I can't see any particular reason why pliers would need to be magnetic. Um, even if I was picking up you know, metal beads or something like that, having loads of them stick to the tools would be kind of annoying. So this is going quite uh, quite nicely. In fact, I'll let everybody have a look. That's what it uh, looks like now. That's a Viper Beris chain. And there are variations on this one as well. Um, there's a variation called Kinged, where instead of one accent uh, ring, there's two um, side by side. Um, that way. And I think there are variations with. Um, the core chain being made up of two rings instead of one. And of course you can make all sorts of variations just by changing colours. Um, I'm using the same accent colour on both sides but I could use two different colours for example. And uh, I could have used different colours in the core here so you could have used like a, a block of blocks of colour to uh, to just provide a little bit more interior uh, variation or if I alternate every other ring because they lie side by side um, I could have had like red down one side green down the other for example and then a different accent so you get all sorts of variations that can uh, can come about Hopefully I'm now start, I am still keeping this on frame. And actually hopefully I'm making this look easy. <laughs>
Uh, that one. Okay, so whilst I'm making, just doing this, I've you know, referred to a couple of new followers tonight. I've just um, explained the pictures that are going on in the bottom left-hand corner. A lot of those are jewellery, which is chainmail, being made on stream, just like you're seeing this one being made. But some of the other things you'll see there are other forms of art and craft that I've done on stream. You'll see uh, wood carving, uh, pyrography, which is creating pictures with heat. Uh, you'll see punch craft, which is a form of miniature rug making. And you'll see scraper board. The scraper board's the, the one that's uh, black with white. So that's made with porcelain clay, which is then covered with black Indian ink. And then you create the picture by scraping away the ink. Um, all of the jewellery that you're seeing at the bottom end, um, because that's all I've got done at the moment, is available in the Etsy store. The URL for that is just above the, uh, the pictures. Um, all the jewellery is made to uh, made to order. Uh, it's not uh, not from stock. And they at some point some of the pyrography will also go into the shop, but uh, it's getting all the photographs and everything uh, taken and working out how to package them and things like that, which takes a little while. But of course, being my shop, I'd um, highly recommend people check it out. I'd recommend them buying something as well, but <laughs> you know that hopefully will come if the, uh, the stuff looks okay. Now then, that doesn't want to go through, which probably means I've picked some, picked up something wrong. Are you doing chain mail? If a ring doesn't want to go through, it's probably trying to tell you something. Like you're doing it the wrong way. Oh, that yeah, um, red is susceptible to doing that. Clary, have they come from? one of the uh, other shops um, usually usually that happens when you twist them uh, it flakes off if you're not careful the surface um, and you have to be you have to be ready is one you have to be really careful of I don't I've never really found that a problem with any of the others okay maybe yeah it's um, I suppose it also depends on, on how the colouring was applied. Anodizing is, is it's not the same as um, like uh, silver plating or anything like that, but it there is a thickness involved and uh, the darker colours especially do tend do need to be sort of um, slightly thicker. And unfortunately there isn't a great deal you can do about it, especially if you're just grasping them with the pliers makes them um, makes the the coating uh, the the um, color crack off.
Right, not too far to go with this one now. You're done. <laughs> what you've uh, you've given you've given up on your red rings on your uh, purple rings. Oh, you finished something. Ah, uh, well, the half person four in one. Is that what you've been trying to do, uh, Claire? Yeah, oh, European fine one. Okay, um, that one shouldn't be too bad. It's it's quite an open weave, is the five in one. Can't actually remember how to how I um, how I do that one, but it it's um, first the first row I think is easy because it's just a stand almost a standard chain, but uh, then uh, don't recall that one being particularly uh, susceptible to uh, what you might uh, find with the, with that one with it being a sheet weave. Put it down on the desk and, and put the rings through on the desk rather than trying to hold it in your hand at least until you've got like um, a couple of rows uh, of it done. And that might help you keep it, uh, keep it stable. Or a box wave. Uh, don't do a four in one for a box wave. Um, you can, but um, it's a real awkward way of doing it. Um, do you know how to do a Byzantine? Because a box weave is a Byzantine without the interlinking pair. And that's probably your easiest way of doing a doing a box no okay just a moment let me just finish this um, a, 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 a box we start with uh, six six rings three pairs just interlinked in a standard chain let me just finish this uh, this off and I'll uh, I'll show you the um, show you the box.
Okay, just a minute, uh, Claire, and I'll. Uh, more. I think I might need an extra one out but we'll deal with that later. Okay, so another Viper Berries chain there, this time in a royal blue with a sky blue accent down the side. Okay, so um, use some of these silver rings. I generally prefer using um, two different sizes of rings for uh, for a box chain um they're a bit thick for this just get the other ones i've got a few silver ones in here they actually sit to sit to, together better sometimes with two different sizes but let me just uh, Okay, so start. I need to start with uh, two closed rings. Okay, there, there are ways of speeding this up. So I've got two closed rings, and I take an open ring and put the two closed rings onto it. And close it up and that's slightly out of focus let me just see if I can bring that back into focus which way is it that way where's the focus on this it's about there okay so one ring with two rings on it and then take another ring and feed it through those two so like that and close it up okay. so what I've got now is I've got if I actually get a hold of it I've got a start of a chain which is two in two two rings inside two other rings okay <laughs> yeah indeed don't worry yeah i'm just doing this and i'll finish then i just extend this another by another pair of rings okay 
Okay, so that's one. Two. So if I get hold of this now, now I've got a th I've got a three link chain, two, two, and two. Okay, so what I'm going to do if I can find mm, this is it's good at this point if you can sort of get like a piece of tie or something like that, which will just help you uh, get um, hold on to it. But I'm just going to put a green ring on, just something to hold on to. It just helps you work out where the chain is. If I drop that, for example, I can just pick it up by the green end and it falls back into place. Okay, now what you do for for box chain and for Byzantine at this point is these last two rings here fold them back. Okay? So they just fold back. Then these two rings, you spread them apart, and the two rings that you folded back, you're going to get hold of and just sort of pull them up the middle, and that forms that square. Okay, so just to do that again, take so hold, hold by your tie. The end two rings, fold it back, so one on each side, so your middle, your middle pair of rings is now out, out the front, and then if you sp spread those two rings apart you can get, like a, use a cocktail stick, or you can use your pliers just to pull those two rings through. And that creates the, the the box. That's your Byzantine block. Okay. What you then do is uh, for Byzantine is put another six. Well, what we do is we go. And I get hold of this, and because of the size of the ring I'm using, this is a little bit unstable. What I'll do is put a ring through those two in the middle. And I've done that wrong. <laughs> okay. That's it. So those two in the middle like that. I'll close that up. Okay, because with box or Byzantine, you they're all done in pairs. So I'll put another one through exactly the same path. Well, I'm trying to do this sort of on camera, but like that. Okay, two rings there. Now what you do for Byzantine is put another two pairs on. Okay. And then you fold you fold back the second the second pair and just keep doing that. But with with a box, you don't put another two pairs uh, pairs and you just put another one pair on. like that and then you what you do is you fold that pair back and again spread those two rings apart and get hold of that pair you've just folded back and you just keep doing that with a box so I'd put another two two pairs on and then fold the second pair back another two pairs fold the second pair back if you if you wanted to go Byzantine you put three pairs on and fold the third pair back. Put three pairs on and fold the third pair back. And that's a lot easier than trying to do a four in one sheet and, and then curve it round. <laughs> yeah. 
you got it. Well done. It's a lot easier. Once, you, once you've done that, you, you can now do Byzantine, you can now do box. Okay. And then you just carry on as long as you, you want. Finish it by putting at least one ring where the cocktail stick is there because otherwise it'll fall apart. That last pair will fall apart. So you need something in there. This one, the rings are a little bit... The aspect ratio is a bit big uh, to, to do with it with the ones I've got here. Um, you've got to keep a little bit of attention on, on it. Um, what I would normally want to do here is at, at the end I'd probably put like four rings through just to hold things in place um, but um, or use sort of some thicker rings uh, at each end just to hold it in place because otherwise it has a slight tendency to fall apart a little bit but it just then needs a bit of tension to pull it back. Right, um, with that lesson over, that's it, I think, for tonight. So if you have any questions, Claire, catch me tomorrow. Uh, I'm always go through it again, I don't mind. But I think tomorrow we'll have a play with something else. And that's what I say at the moment. It sort of falls, falls into a really funny shape. But I just pull and it snaps back. Um, <laughs> thank you. Okay, guys, I'm going to point out the jewellery shop, um, which has been, you know, some of the pictures there have been for jewellery. Check it out if you haven't already. If there's anything there that takes your fancy, obviously I'd encourage you to buy it. If you want variations on it, just start a conversation. There are variations, different lengths, different colours, blocks of colours, all sorts of things you can do with it. Um, otherwise, I would suggest following me on, uh, on Twitter twitch get the two right um so that you can get notification when i go live next um you can also follow me on twitter uh, it's ads ever a tweet does go out when i go live and things like when i put a new item in the shop and things like that so uh, tonight we finished off the green and black um uh, Viper Berries chain and we've completed the blue and um, the, the royal blue and sky blue Viper Berries chain that's uh, next to it here and um, otherwise if you don't f want to follow me just want to try and catch me next then I will be hopefully on tomorrow night from around 8 p.m. UK time 20 hundred hours GMT or two and a half hours ago uh, it's a bit of a longer stream than normal tonight but I just finished off that chain and uh, a little bit of teaching there as well <laughs> uh, one of the two shops that I told you about um, Crystalettes um, you'll find them uh, Claire uh, okay thanks everybody it's been fun I've enjoyed uh, doing that on stream hopefully you've enjoyed watching and i look forward to seeing you in the studio again in the future so bye for now